right now we're waiting on two flights coming from the Dominican Republic, which is a source country for narcotics, uh, especially cocaine. Passport? You don't know how a drug trafficker looks like. They use old people, young people. The more people you stop, the better chance you have to get something. Hi. Hi. You have your passport? Yeah, my passport. And you coming from Santiago or Santo Domingo? Yeah, um, yeah. I'm from Santiago. I'm going to Raleigh. Huh. I'm actually waiting for my flight. Your flight's not in here. It's upstairs. OK, follow. This is a young kid, kind of lost. He didn't know where to go now for his connecting flight. He didn't want to make any eye contact. I found that strange. Anybody ask you to put anything in your bag? Everything is yours? Yeah. OK. So how long you were in the Dominican Republic? Um, about a month. And what do you do here? You go to school, work? Uh, I go to school and... So the school, you know, is open. So you stay there for a whole month. What happened with that? Oh, right now, I'm actually too old, but uh, I do have to do it. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. Uh, you're too jumpy. What's going on? I'm going to So how old are you now? Who paid for your ticket? Oh, for your plane ticket? Your brother in North Carolina or where? Oh, he's actually in California. Oh, he's in California. Have you ever been in California? I just came from California. Okay, you came from California going to the Dominican Republic? Yeah, come, pay attention. So you came from California here and then Dominican Republic? And what is the plan? What are you going to do now? What is this? Xbox. Why are you bring an Xbox? Can you try that for me? Let me know. This is something that we always got to check, because we have found drugs inside our Xboxes, speakers, electronics, radio, TVs, any item. So you took the Xbox to the, uh, to the room? So the X-ray. Let's see what we get with this one. Ready to go to work? Up. This is Nero. He's been my partner for the last five years. We're here at the mail facility, and we're just looking for narcotics. <laughs> we're looking for heroin, ecstasy, fentanyl, marijuana. And lately, we've been getting a lot of cocaine. If there's odor, He's going to find it. There's something there, huh? He's alerting to the package. And this box is coming from Panama. Marrero, I got an alert on the box. Can you check it out, please? You got it, man. This one was going to Georgia. I'm going to run it through the x-ray and take a look, and we'll see what's going on. Yep, there's definitely something wrong with that box. Now comes the front part. We got to open the box. Brand new clothes. It looks like a gift or something. But maybe that's just to try to convince us that it's good. But we'll check it out. Maybe it's in the box. The only way to tell is cutting it or probing it. Let's see if I can get under here. That's glued really good. 
This is definitely something wrong because boxes aren't usually glued like this. There we go. It's loaded around the perimeter. It's got something concealed inside the flaps of the box. It could be any drug. It's not a lot right here, but it'll add up. That blue stuff is detergent. You can smell it. This is mask the chemical odor of the narcotics. It's fortunate. The canine has a really good scent. So for him, obviously, it didn't work. And the x-ray machine doesn't care about smells. It doesn't look for it, you know. We have eight packages total. We'll go test it real quick. We're going to use a thermoscientific Gemini, and it'll send a laser beam through the material. It'll tell me what it is. It's cocaine hydrochloride. 278.4 grams, a little over a quarter of a kilo. Now we're gonna do a seizure report where we'll document everything, where it's coming from, who it was going to. We're gonna call HSI, maybe do a controlled delivery, or maybe it ends here and we just seize the narcotics and it gets destroyed. They're pretty good at it. They put brand new clothes, they send you the receipt so you think it's a legitimate purchase. It was a good try. They get an A for effort. It just didn't work out for them. Nervous, fidgety. What do you got? Yeah, there's nothing there. It's good. Yeah. Okay, where'd it come out? Through here? Yeah. Everything's okay? Yeah, it's good. Okay, so it's nothing in there. You can put it away. Hang out here, I'll be back. I'm gonna check the ticket. We checked the bags, everything was clean, but I trust my instinct. He told me his brother paid for his ticket, and I would like to verify all the information that is possible. He said he went from California, DR, but now he's gonna go to North Carolina. He said a month. Yeah, a month. And the ticket was purchased by who? This is the Same name. It's the address. It's North Carolina. So that's probably his brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I did some research about his flight, and everything was OK. All right. Let's put everything away. The back was negative. The Xbox was negative. So he's good to go for me. When you go out the door, Make a left, and then we're going to go upstairs. All right, thank you. Yeah, All right, have a good day. You too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some people, they're nervous just to be nervous. So I guess we got to move on. All right, so we got information that a large quantity of methamphetamine was smuggled from Mexico and has come to a local stash house and has possibly been distributed from this location. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some physical surveillance on that target location, uh, see what kind of activity is going on at the house. We did start doing surveillance three or four days ago on this residence, and we've seen somebody moving back and forth. Was he driving? He was driving a black pickup truck. Yeah. 
We do believe he's a drug dealer, but we don't have that probable cause to kick his door right now. Hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll be able to do a search warrant inside the house and take off this large quantity of drugs. So that's it. Ready to roll? Ready to roll. Loud and clear. I'm going to go ahead and do a drive-by and see if I can see any other cars that we haven't seen before, see any other people moving out, see the activities of our main target, just to kind of get a feel of the pattern. So just beyond this White House, and this is what we believe to be the stash house. He's got a light blue door, so it's very easy to identify. All right, so we're going to drive by. We think that this bulk load of methamphetamine is probably sitting in this house. Hopefully, we'll see some kind of deal go down where these drugs are being exchanged. these boxes through the mail facility we get narcotics every day you name it we've seen it loaded sneakers coffee beans radios hard drives electronic equipment nothing surprises anymore it's like every day you get something new this one was a negative definitely not narcotics That doesn't look good. And it says sporting goods, equipment, and two fans. I don't see the reason to send fans. They got them everywhere. This package is coming from a source country, Trinidad and Tobago, and it's going to a demand country, Australia. The value is very high over there for any type of narcotic. Something doesn't look right. Seems like cheap plastic, but in the image, it looks too thick. The only way to really look if you don't like the image, you take a quick peek inside. See that right there? That's not supposed to be there. That's why it looks thicker in the X-ray machine. They usually glue them in, and they're not hard to pop off. Try to see if we can peel back a little bit of it so we can see what's under it. And whatever it is, it's wrapped in uh, aluminum foil. No. See? It's loaded. You can see that it's white. I'll test it real quick. We should have blue with some pink above it. It's hard to see, but it's there. It's positive, it's cocaine. We have 806.4 grams. I can tell you what it's gonna go for now. Nothing. One for the good guys. You need what? You need a witness? You gonna do the PD or no? All right, go ahead and tell your passenger. We're gonna take her to a private room and I'm gonna head up there. We have a female passenger coming now from the Caribbean. We'll start with this one. <laughs> one of the officers randomly select her. She had a short trip. She went for a few days, but she had a huge bag with her. And I want to see why the back is so big, what she has in there. Check everything. You got to fill every panel, the size, bottom. Can I see the purse? 
that was felt heavy. Something else in here. Oh, wow. Surprise. What is this? <laughs> Something was inside behind the lining of the purse. A package on each side of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the test kit. Remain seated there. We're gonna test what you bring in here. Positive for cocaine. Oh my God, please. Now we're gonna place the, the passenger on the rest for the importation of narcotics into the United States. Go ahead. Place the one. Yeah. You're on the rest for importation of narcotics, okay? Just relax. She's thinking it's a nightmare. Well, this is reality. One point one six seven. What do we got? Cocaine. Where was it in the liner? Yeah. Yours? You understand you were transporting narcotics into the United States? So at this point, the more you give me, the better this is going to go for you. So do whatever you can to help yourself. Oh, my God. Life is over. in position with an eye on the target door. All right, Temple. The target left what we believe to be the stash house probably about an hour ago, but we didn't have enough people up here at the time to follow him. I was able to see him walk out, and he didn't have anything in his hands, so he may be running some errands, but we don't know. Our target's driving a black Dodge Ram pickup truck, so now it's just a waiting game. Oh, this might be good. The target just arrived back. Have you laid eyes on him? Oh, yeah. He's sitting in his black truck. Oh, he's moving right now. He's out of the truck. He's got a small bag. He's looking around quite a bit. That could be money. It looks boxy, kind of like if you have a stack of cash. Who knows? It's going to have to be something certain to find the right amount of probable cause to take him down. It's the bag he had in his hand when he went into the target location. So to me, that looks like he went and picked up some cash from somewhere. And then we've got a train. It's about to be out of my view. I have a train that decided to stop for some reason right in front of me. Yeah, copy that. Coming out of the house, can't tell what he's got in his hands. You still got eyes on him? No, I could barely see it under the train. I can see the plastic bag. It's looking really heavy. Copy. The bags could be some meth ready to go. Uh, he's uh, in the truck. He's backing out. I turn to roll a little bit. Oh, shoot. He's moving right now. He may be going to a drug deal, and I am blocked. Oh, he's moving right now. We got a possible drug dealer with possibly the drugs in this car, and I am blocked. Come on, train. Yeah, he's rolling back. Where's he at? I didn't have him, so put something else good. Lost him? 
He might be going through the neighborhood. I'm gonna try to get in front of him. All right, let's see. Yeah, right here. So that's him right there, black Dodge Ram. Yeah, I just met him at the intersection going northbound. So our target pulled out, and we've got some guys that are following him right now. We're going to try to catch up to him. Yeah, he just turned left into the shopping park. All right, let's get in behind him. I just don't want to get too close. He's facing the store. We parked right there in front of him. All right, so the Target's vehicle is parked in front of that thrift store. So he's just sitting in his truck out in the middle of the parking lot right now. His truck's right there, facing away from us, basically. Looking around. We're speculating what he's actually doing here, but with his mannerisms as far as parking way out from the store, not going in, that's very suspicious activity. It kind of makes you think that he's waiting on somebody to show up, which would be great. If he drops that bag to somebody and we can get that guy taken off down the road, then we're going to have our probable cause to get in that house. Set, so we're gonna make it as comfortable as we possibly can. I'm gonna release one hand, okay? <laughs> Most people, once they get caught, are upset. Some, some are genuine, some are just trying to make people feel bad. Here's some tissues. We have kids, right? I have one, he's three. <laughs> I know it's hard, but you gotta just try and relax. At this point, you just help yourself, okay? okay. Mistakes happen, now you fixed them. Who gave you the purse? I'm only here. How do you know? Um, so know. Is he a boyfriend or just a friend? Um, we used to date. Now he yeah, lives he down there. Down. Yeah. What's his name? What's his last name? I honestly don't know. You don't know his last name? No. But you've known him for years? Right. Um, Who are you supposed to give this to? I don't even know. All right, listen, listen. An agent's going to come here, right? They're going to ask you the same questions. you got to try real hard to remember his last name. It's up to you whether you want to cooperate or not, OK? We've contacted HSI. They'll do some further questioning on her and see if we can get some other information for anyone that might be connected. All right, so in the gold forerunner pulled up next to our target. Driver getting out. All right, so white guy, he's getting in his truck, getting in his truck. All right, he's uh, in the truck right now. White male from the gold vehicle got in the passenger seat of our Dodge Ram, and he's meeting with our target right now. So the target vehicle. Did y'all see anything in the driver's hand of the forerunner? We opened up the passenger side door and threw something in. I couldn't see what it was. When you see an item come from one vehicle and go to the other vehicle, most people would be able to determine that that's possibly a drug deal that just occurred. All right, go forward, back and out. Target vehicle leaving also. All right, copy. We will focus on this gold forerunner. All right, the vehicle is headed towards the exit. All right, here we go. 
the driver of the Forerunner threw something in his back passenger seat, and we're following him north right now. He's hitting 75 southbound. All right, we're going to be committed for 75 entrance. Yeah, copy them. Copy. Temple waiting to make contact. Georgia State Patrol guy getting on to help us with the traffic stop. Right here on the left. All right, we have a uh, golden color forearm with extremely dark tinted windows. Good. All right, here we go. And blue lights are on. GSP is deploying the K9 on the Forerunner. They're doing a search of the vehicle right now. All right, here we go. Hey, will you grab that bag? I'm gonna take it to the back and put it out on the back of the car. There's the bag. That's the same bag that came out of the house. This came from our guy. The bag is loaded. So we got math. There's a gun, appears to be a Glock. Probably a couple grand in cash. He had a set of scales. Hello. Apparently our guy in the Dodge is stressing out barely on the phone about something. It's possible the gold forerunner got a text off to him saying, hey dude, I just got pulled over by the police. You need to go ahead and secure him and the location. If he spooked that much, there is the possibility that he could start flushing everything that's in that house. Yeah, copy that. All right. All right, bro. Bye-bye. Right, so we're close to 1,000 grams in just one bag. So we're looking at two kilos of methamphetamine. We're looking at about 10 grand. Let's throw this in the back of my van. All right, they got him, guys. Yeah, they got him. They got him. Copy. Our guys just detained the guy driving the black Dodge that delivered the meth. So it's a great day so far. But we just keep rolling. Next, we're going to try to move into getting a search warrant from the house that we know it came from. I would venture to say that there's going to be a lot more meth in that address. So we're going to continue the investigation from here. You brought in drugs to the United States that are worth a very good amount of money, willingly or unwillingly, or no knowledge or knowledge. It doesn't change anything. Right now, we're going to talk, OK? <laughs> the main focus right now is to see if she's telling us as much as she does know, because she obviously knows the main guy. I know your birthday was yesterday. Did you go down for a birthday trip or what? Yeah. What did you do when you were down there? Uh, you know, I went out to eat. We went to some parties, went to the beach. You take any pictures on your birthday trip? Down there? No. Did you have a hotel room right? in the state when you went down there? No, I stayed with him at okay. where he lived. Who, who paid for your ticket? He did. Did you find that weird? Um, I felt that he was trying to court me again. So you went down there with the purpose of celebrating your birthday with him? Yes. And you don't remember his last name? No. You dated this guy for a good period of time. That's like a first date thing. Hey, what's your name? This is my name. Yes, that is true. That's hard for us to believe. Did he tell you what was in the purse or what it was for? 
No, never told me. All he told me was that it was for his friend's mom. And you don't it's remember what friend's mom? He did not. He never told me. Like the friend's name or anything? He never told me a name. How are you supposed to give her his purse? I don't, I don't know. Have you ever no. met her? No. I was assuming that he was going to tell me by the time I got back. I mean, he would have texted me. So everything was based off of you assuming that he was going to give you further instructions? You don't even know his last name. Doesn't make sense to me. Let me explain kind of how this, this is going, right? Like, you're in a very bad situation. You have a good job and you have a kid. But he took advantage of you. Whether he played on your love or he played on your vulnerabilities, he basically set you up because you took all the risk. And right now, you're doing a lot of protecting of him because you don't want to get him in trouble. But remember who ultimately got you in trouble. You have to start being honest with us. Is there anything you want to tell us that you want to change? Or like, hey, I remember his last name now, or anything like that? Is there anything you want to tell us, like, hey, I remember his last name now, or anything like that? I believe he told me maybe in the beginning, but like, I can't say it. So, I'm, what did he tell you? I think it was. All right. So, was he going to pay you for this trip? No, he never talked about money. He never like, talked about anything. About money, did he tell you what was in the purse or what it was for? No, never told me. All he told me was that it was for his friend's mom. You have to have some knowledge because you have to know what risk is involved. I, I don't. I never even touched the bag. I saw it. Did I question it? No. Should I have? I, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't. I assume because he knows that I have him. I would never think he would. Put you in that situation. And that's stupid of me to you know. I understand that. Do you have any pictures of him? My phone. The text messages? Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that's him. Okay. Trust me, I'm not holding anything back. We can text him right now and tell me what to tell him so you can hear whatever you need to see. I don't even care. Like, I have nothing to do with this. Like, oh. I wouldn't jeopardize. I understand. I'm not seeing my son. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath, man. Just for no freaking time. Like, Typical passengers like this, they're not told a lot. She is cooperating with us, and so we're going to go forward from there. All right, we're going to call the prosecutors, and we're going to finish our paperwork. Do you have any questions real quick? No. OK. Come follow us. As of now, we've gotten most that we could get out of her. We'll still process her, and we're going to have a discussion and make a final decision whether we prosecute. But different things she told us and other leads we can follow down to further the case. States stands ready, particularly in the area of law enforcement in the fight against wildlife trafficking. Trafficking says we value trinkets more than we value these magnificent animals in the wild. We will stop the poachers. We will stop the profits to address this transnational threat. We're on the way to an uh, air cargo warehouse in, in Miami. We just got a call from the senior wildlife inspector with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The shipment we're going to go look at is coming from South America, and it's going to a country in Asia. This is a common shipping route for a lot of smuggled wildlife, and the importer has had a previous violation. So we just want to go check the shipment and see if what it is. Right here? Yeah, right here. We got an alert of a possible shipment containing uh, illegal seafood products. This is it. We have a total of 18 boxes. So we're going to check to make sure that everything is in compliance. Uh, and let's see what we get. 
Let's take a look. Sea cucumbers, fish bladders. In this case, the species on the shipment, we don't regulate it. This no. bus is good to go. Y'all want to try open yeah, another box? Another one. Oh, wow. Wow. We got shark fins. I've been checking this type of commodity for the past two or three years. And in order to trade shark fins between countries, you need a special permit. At a quick glance, we have three species, two of them most likely in violation. So let's see if they have any documentation whatsoever. Let's tape it up and then let's take it. All right. This is a good catch, guys. So now we are going to transport the uh, boxes to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Office of Law Enforcement in Miami so that we can do more detailed examination and also ID the fins and making sure that everything is documented. It's a really big seizure. We've gone through two boxes so far out of 18. This is just the beginning. All right, I got the search warrant in hand, and we are headed over there to you guys. Hopefully this bulk load of methamphetamine is sitting in this house. But I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see once we get in there. All right, we have the main target detained. That's one threat down, so we'll go ahead and knock on this door. Hopefully there's not another person in there with weapons of any kind and we'll uh, start searching. figure out what's going on. They made entry. There are no other people in there. So we're going to go ahead and start the search process. Anything through that backside? Nothing back there? No. Nope. Nothing? Sure. He's got dope somewhere. I mean, I'm sure once we start digging in here. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Big box full of dope. Meth. Yeah, there's a bunch in there. Bags filled with meth. Big box of money in the back, too. That's good. During the search of the residence, we found probably about forty or fifty thousand dollars in cash, a loaded handgun, and a cardboard box that has multiple gallon bags filled with meth. Uh, very similar to those two gallon sized bags that we just took off the traffic stop earlier. Now we're in the process of getting rooms labeled and getting some pictures. Then we'll pick up all the evidence from here and take it to our office with the evidence that we seized on a traffic stop. This is like a big ass bag of ice. I don't know how much math it is right now. We'll just have to wait and see once we figure stuff out. But it's a good haul. We're getting a good chunk off the street today. We brought the shark fins back here to the warehouse, and we're just helping Fish and Wildlife process and go through it. Let's do this. 
Let's start feeling this way. The shark fin trade is a very lucrative market. Approximately uh, 100 million sharks are taken yearly to make the famous shark fin soup. Shark fin soup in Asia can go from $100 to $400, $600 a bowl. We have a mix of species. Some of them fall into the Endangered Species Act, and they require permits to be exported. So far, we have silky sharks, great hammerhead. This is a tiger shark. This is a pectoral fin. This shipment came in with no permits, and that's why it makes the entire shipment illegal. So this box is done, so now we can do... Let's uh, get a total box. number on that one, box number one. Okay. In this shipment, we have an approximate total of 1,400 pounds. It'll go for $500 a pound. So this shipment's worth approximately $700,000. We're looking at thousands of shark fins. This is the largest seizure I've ever been a part of, of working for CBP now for 10 years. It's a sad day for conservation and for sharks in general. There's hundreds of animals that were illegally obtained on this shipment. However, it's a good day for us because it directly affects the revenue from illegal sharfing trade. So what we're doing is testing this to see if it tests positive for methamphetamine. Put just a little sample in here. This one should test blue. Boom. So that's a positive test for methamphetamine. The purchasers like big shards. It makes them feel like they're getting the best stuff in the world. But meth is meth, so they're each a kilo a piece. There was 19 bags from the house, and then two that we seized on a traffic stop. All in all, we got approximately 21 kilos of methamphetamine, worth approximately $105,000 on the street. Along with the drugs, we made two arrests, and we seized two handguns and approximately $67,000 in cash. I'm extremely happy. Anytime we can take methamphetamine off the streets, it's an incredible day for law enforcement. <laughs>